Welcome back to the Nullify Take, where I've got the TNT takes for you on Australian Survivor Blood vs. Water episode 15. Uh, I've just watched the episode and boy oh boy were we in for a shocker towards the end of this episode and obviously we will get into all of that as I talk about the five biggest takeaways for this episode. Now leading into this episode myself and Jake um, and also Gerald last week uh, have been ranking players to see who we think are currently playing the best game out there and the three players that have stood out above everybody else up until this point have been without a doubt Mark and first spot sam and then josh they seem to be the three players that have got the most agency in the game and most likely will win this season and i wasn't surprised to again see all three of them feature very heavily in this episode so let's start with the first takeaway for this episode um the first one is that josh continues to play a very good game um i think that you know he could easily be mistaken as this alpha guy who's super fit um, and does not really have a strategic or social game in a, a lot of seasons that he played, but clearly this season he has made very strong connections. Um, he's he's found out now as the person who um, should be targeted because obviously Mel called him out in that previous tribal council. So a lot of this episode is him trying to make sure that people are not going to target him just based on the fact that Mel called him out and blew up his spot in this game. And you can see that he's got a plan in place. He's got his cousin, Jordan, who's never going to turn his back on him. Uh, they look very, very close together. Um, he's got a, an alliance with Mark and Sam. And then in the other part of that, he's also got an alliance, which we hear of today in this episode, which is Juicy Dave and Chrissy. So it does seem that Josh has got himself right in the middle of two factions, potentially within that committee or, you know, the strong six, like they were called earlier. He does seem to have an extremely strategic mind for this game and i'm not surprised that nina early in the season you know game recognizes game she knew that he was the person that she wanted to hitch her ride against and sort of go deep in the game with so i think josh is someone that we need to look out for and he does need to be dealt with sooner rather than later if someone else in the game wants to win it because it does look like he does have all of that respect and that the perception out there is that he is the player that is probably going to win this game if they don't take him out. So, you know, he does extremely well here. He talks to Mark this episode. He lets Mark know that Jordy has told him about the idol and he immediately diffuses that and says that even though I know about the idol, I can appreciate if I was in your situation, I wouldn't have wanted to tell anyone about it either, but we need to take care of Jordy. He cannot be trusted, um, which I think really builds that loyalty between Josh and Mark because you can see Mark later on talking to Sam about the fact that he wants to stay with Josh, but a little bit more about that later on. Um, it's really interesting that idols have become such a big talking point of this season, but it isn't necessarily the idol plays that are that great this season and that people are saving each other with idols and things like that. I mean, JLP even makes a joke here saying that he still is yet to see a good idol play this season. And I think that, you know, if anybody from production ever stumbles across this channel, um, you know, I've said for a long time, you don't need twists. You don't need all these crazy idol plays to make a good season. This season for me has been pretty solid without even an idol play um, and just the drama that idols have brought into it. And I'm very happy, you know, touch wood, it's still a couple of episodes left this season. We haven't seen too many wacky, crazy twists like we said, like we saw last season, which I wasn't a fan of. So overall, good on the twists, good on the idols. I'm okay with how things have played out. Um, Second point here, Geordie's game is absolutely hanging on a threat here. He does do pretty well this episode in winning immunity, but obviously he's not in the ins. He thought that he and Jesse, they were running the game and they had Sam and Mark pretty close. I mean, he talks to Sam throughout this episode saying we really wanted to have the two pairs get to the end, which would have been Geordie and Jesse and then Sam and Mark. But Geordie is to blame for his brother's downfall this episode because... 
if you really wanted to go to the end, Jordy, with these guys, why did you burn Mark? Mark trusted you. I don't think Mark was going to come after you if you didn't overstep and if you didn't share this information with the wrong person. And, you know, it's funny how that works out. I've said for a very long time, do not tell anybody about idols. That information can be used. It can be very useful. And it's been used against Geordie here, even though he doesn't have an idol. But he does find a clue to one, which he very carefully um, get, gets Jesse to put that in the back of his pants, or he puts it in the back of Jesse's pants. Jesse gets the clue, reads it, goes out and look for this idol, and then finds it. But Sam comes up with a plan to steal it. And we'll talk about that in a little bit when I talk about Sam and these points. But, you know, Jesse, now I would be very interested to know where do you guys think he's going to go? Like he's seen as the Joker going up against Sam, who's the thief in the game now. Um, I feel like even if he goes and tells people about the fact that Sam's got an idol, he just doesn't have the social capital or the agency in the game where people want to work with him. They don't trust him. They think that he's got loose lips. So I don't think even if he does go there and, you know, tells people about it, I don't know if they're even going to believe him or want to work with him at this stage. The one thing I guess that he really should be pushing for is that if Sam's got an idol and Mark's got an idol, that's a power couple, both with idols. Like you need to take one of these two out. Otherwise they're going to go deep in the game and potentially win this thing. So I, I do believe that's his only potential play here at this point. Now. Looking into number three, let's talk about Mark. He is continuing to get his way this season. And as you would have seen in the beginning of this video, um, Mark is the number one ranked person, according to myself, Jake, and Gerald, who's been on the podcast as well. We think that he's probably going to win this season. The edit has had him predominantly as one of the main people. But Sam has also always had that potential of winning this season but i've always wondered is it just that she's getting a great edit because she is close to mark and she's mark's partner um and they have to show both of them or is it vice versa could sam win and mark is just getting a good edit because of that but i've always thought one of these two they'll win the game but i think that we're starting to see this power struggle between sam and mark go more towards mark at this point, like he's gotten his way on a couple of votes now. Um, again, here he convinces Sam to cut her main person, the person that she's worked with throughout the game up until the merge, and he gets the target that he wants out of the game, which is Jesse. He does not have that close relationship with him in the game. Um, and you know, Sam at one point said, I can't let Joss stay in this game, he's gonna win this whole game, everybody's respecting him, but yet she does not make the move here against Mark, she stays loyal to her husband there's a lot of people even gerald saying last week on the recap that maybe one of them will betray each other i just don't think that's going to happen and if one of them betrays each other maybe it's going to be mark but i mean i don't know like they just seem too close to me their husband and wife they share the same bank account there is no incentive for them to turn on each other at this point but mark is continuing to keep his alliance members he's going to continue to have the respect they've seen his game from the start sam is going to have to pull out some amazing moves maybe blindside people with this idle play if geordie doesn't tell anybody that she's got an idol but she's going to have to play out of this world to be considered as a bigger player than Mark at this point if he makes the final and Josh doesn't. That's that's my opinion about um, that at this point. Now, number four is that we just witness a massacre. You know, it was almost like the Red Wedding on Game of Thrones. No one saw it coming, you know, and Sam had this person, Jesse, who she sees like a child or like someone that is like a child to her and she's got a husband and she struggles to choose between the two of them, you know, she has to go and betray Jesse here and she does it masterfully. I mean, Jesse goes, finds the idol, Sam follows him, pretends to help him. <laughs> she puts it in her clothing, goes away, never gives it back. I mean, bad on Jesse for not going back and saying, hey, I need this thing before the you know um, tribal council. But he didn't think he was going to get votes, which is absolutely insane. You should always expect to get votes. And he did see some of the signs earlier when he said people were quiet and you know the boys were way too calm. He, he knew something was up, which prompted him to go and look for that idol. But Sam must have done a really good job in just convincing him, stay calm, you're good, there's no issues. If you're in trouble, I'm going to play it for you. And and you can see it at the end when he gets voted out and he talks to her and he says, did you know about this? And she's like, 
I did, which is great for her to own up to it. She has to if she wants to try and get his vote at the end, which is going to be super tough, I think, at this point. Because I do think, after talking to Gerald last week, that we've got to understand that people, they're not watching this as a TV show. They're out there living with this person, relying on them. Um, I think it's a different level of betrayal that happens when you're out there and you've relied on this person to vote with you. They become very close very quickly there's nothing to distract them like phones or media or any of these things so um i think that you know it's a massive move you know she gets the idol it's going to be somewhat impressive but you know she again says like i will talk to your brother and he does stay calm but does give that information to geordie before he leaves because i was just thinking man if you go and you leave and you do not tell geordie about this bad on you if that is what you're going to do and luckily he wasn't that naive, and he did tell Geordie, which to me shows that he is super pissed, which obviously he is. I mean, he should be for getting blindsided in the way that he got blindsided here in this episode. Um, he also um, really reminds me of the Australian version of Eric Reichenbach now, obviously getting you know, giving his immunity idol away. I think I've mentioned it more than once, even in the recaps with uh, Khan doing that earlier this season. But again, you know, young guy gets outsmarted by someone that's a bit older than him. Uh, and this is going to be a massive life lesson for him. I think Jesse is a super capable player. I'd love to see him come back. He's got the right attitude to go out there and have fun, pull out devious moves. He's good in challenges. I'm all for, for a Jesse return one day. You know, put that out there as a stamp of approval for All Stars 2. Um, number five, let's talk about it. Sam, you know, like I mentioned, two of the other three people that I think are currently in the top three and most likely to win this season, Sam is still in the running. She's hanging on there by a thread, in my opinion, at this stage. But like I said, she's lost her biggest ally in the game. So she really continues to rely more and more on Mark now to be the person that she gets info from in regards to what the alliance is going to do. And she does not have Jesse close to her. Geordie's not going to be happy with her. So automatically she's lost his vote. And I think Michelle was the only other person who voted with the boys, the Jesse and Geordie faction here. Uh, actually, there must have been another person. I can't remember who the other person is that voted with them. But still, she doesn't have much room to move here, I feel like, at the moment. She's not close to um, KJ and Shay from what I've seen. Uh, I think she's semi-okay with Chrissy, but Chrissy didn't pick her here for uh, the reward that they went on. So... I feel very worried for Sam in this game. I don't feel like she's got agency in the game. I don't feel like she's got the ability to pull moves because no one's going to want to move with her here. And I feel like she is seeing the train coming her way and she's been trying to change it. She's like, my best moves is not the best moves for Mark and our game plans don't align, but she's been standing back for Mark at this point and she's allowed for him to take control here. And again, I mean, Mark had the numbers they had a very solid alliance that they could rely on. The tribe that Sam was in was a lot more fractured. So I understand like logically why they went that way and why Sam is supporting her husband out there. Um, like again, I said, they share bank accounts so or a bank account, I'm sure. So if he wins the money, she wins the money and maybe they can pay off that mortgage a lot quicker. But at the end of the day, I do think her road to the end is going to be very tough. So I'm very intrigued to see if she can get there and what type of moves she can pull out to go forward. What did you guys think of this episode? What's your five takeaways? Do you agree or disagree with anything that I've mentioned? Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know. I appreciate all of the comments. I normally try and get back to you guys when you do leave those. And as always, guys, we'll be back tomorrow night to talk about the next episode. So see you then and goodbye.